So if you go out to good old powerapps911.com, that's right, I'm plugging my own website. What do I do? Go away. Um, so out here on the bottom of this page is a contact us form, right? So 99.9% .9 of our customer leads come in this way. And so we've, we've done this uh, for my previous company. We do this for another company. You know, web form contacts has kind of been the norm for us for a long time. And it works really great for, you know, the whole customer process. But one of the things that I realized was, you know, I had never in the past done anything around putting these type of uh, things into a mailing list or having a way to follow up with these customers who, for whatever reason, the sales process didn't go. So, but another problem though is I didn't want to just sign all these people up to get spam, right? No one wants more spam in their life, right? You're all thinking there's no way in heck I'm going to contact you. If I know that if I contact you, I'm going on to some 18 spam list later, right? I think that's fair. I don't think you should. So what I did was I said, well, wait a minute. This is, this is a business problem that it has very straightforward rules. So what I wanted to figure out was how could I use flow to take this information and process it so that I wanted to actually ask people. So after you fill out this contact form, um, what I want to do is I want to ask you, hey, we're going to get back to you about the whole, you know, your question, the things we, you, you need help with. But while you're waiting on us to do that, do you want to join our mailing list? And if you press you want to join our mailing list, I just want to magically in one, one, one click of that button, add you to our mailing list, right? So I don't want to give it to anybody who doesn't want it, but it turns out that probably 75% of people who contact us for help with power apps or flow or any of the sort, they want to join our mailing lists and they're, they're excited. So I'm like, well, if you want to join my mailing list, I want to make this possible. So I sat down one day and wrote a flow to do this. And so I'm going to show you the actual flow that we use. So ask power apps, 911 contacts to join the mailing list. And you can see, I got a bunch out there running. Um, so here, if we say edit flow, Okay, now one of the hard parts for me was a lot of people when they do this stuff, they control their website, right? They, like they, they hard coded the entry form or they're using, you know, a platform where they're putting the users kind of in a way that they can control things and do it. Well, that is not the case. So for us at PowerApps911 and for BoldZebras.com, the other website this is running on, we use Wix for our website. For better or for worse, a lot of people laugh at me and make fun of me for it. That's fine. It works for what we need. But so Wix has this built-in contact form that you just saw, and that contact form just sends an, a text-based or an HTML-based email, text-based, I don't know, one of those type of email formats. So I don't have it in a database to query. I can't have the contact form trigger a flow. So what I had to do was I had to say, all right, when a new email arrives in my inbox, and it is from no reply at parastorage.com, because that's what the... Um, you know, the, the emails come in as. So when those emails come in to me, okay, I want you to go off and do a whole bunch of really complicated work. And the reason I have to do all this complicated work is we won't spend too much time on it, but the reason I need to do all this complicated work is because I had to parse that HTML piece by piece by piece. So we're not going to overthink it too much here, but basically I go and I grab a portion of the string Right, so I'm going to, I strip out the first 275 characters because those 275 characters are always, you know, the header information. So strip out all of those. So that's what this does. I then grab the name, uh, start, I grab everything after that. So basically take uh, the body that came over, take out everything that had no name. So now I have everything post the name. This is where I grab the email address and we're not going to get into these text functions because it'll take us hours, but I had to write a text function because the email address can be different, right? You're like, Oh, you just grab everything, you know, from the start of the email field to where it ends in .com. Or what if somebody sends it from .eu or from .au, right? Or .nz, right? We get a lot of uh, international customers. So I had to really kind of think through a little bit of a different set of business logic. So I ended up having to find, the next known field and just assume that everything between the two known fields is an email address, which was pretty tricky. Um, and here I'll show you one of these, but once again, I don't, we, we just, we would never have time to like talk through all this, but right. So I have to do a trim and replace the text of what came in the, uh, the body of the thing. So find this text and basically trim all that out. So, 
But the, the great thing is, is that Flow has all of these wonderful, if you look down here, um, no, not conversion functions. Do, 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 do. Where are they? It has a whole bunch of string functions. I've just passed them over, I'm sure. Oh, they're at the top. So you do a C more here, right? So concat, substring, replace. And this is where you get really convoluted. And I had a really tough time, but I was able to get through it. Okay. So then first name, same type of thing. I create a variable for first name. I'm going to use it. And so I'm going to try and set the first name value in there. But what I found out was some people have, some people don't include a first name. Or sorry, some people only put their first name because the fields are, are, are wide open. So some people do first name, some people do last name, some people do like their weird initials. So I really had to keep iterating through this to work through to get the first names, the last names. Okay, anyway, so that's, we get a bunch of those. And then I check to see if the first name makes sense. If the first name came out blank, then I change what I got in last name to be first name. All right, anyway, we got a bunch of information about people. Oh, that was complicated. I'm sorry. I, didn't, I shouldn't have even talked about any of that. So then we're going to send an email with options. So this is just a default flow, but we're going to send it to the person's email address and we'll say, hey, thanks for contacting Power Apps 911. We're going to give them two options, yes and no. And it's going to say, you know, um, Shane number two, may we add you to our mailing list? We send emails less than once a month and promise to never share our mailing list with anyone. And then we give them the whole thing. You know, if you need to talk to us immediately, call us on the phone. If not, we'll get to you here soon. But so this is a default flow email and it's going to just have at the bottom and there was no easy way for me to show you this. So if you want to see what it looks like, just fill out the contact form and say, no, we won't bother you. Um, but uh, there's a yes button and a no button at the bottom of the email. And so if they choose yes, so we did a flow condition, selected option is equal to yes. Then we add them to our MailChimp mailing list. And I send an email to myself that says, ha ha, you got another person to sign up for the mailing list. Good job, Shane. Um, and if they say no, then it sends an email that says, womp, womp, they don't like you. Um, and in reality, what happens is, you know, either people generally will hit yes right away or they never press no. I mean, almost never does anyone take the time to press no. They just don't do anything. And if they don't do anything after 30 days, it just, uh, the flow fails out. And so they don't get added and, um, you know, we don't bother them again or anything like that. But, but this is an example of something where, you know, I had set business rules. I understood the whole process. I just had to go and break this thing down so that I could route these emails back to users. And I wanted to do an approval email, right? So if you look at it, you can do approval emails to do very similar, but approval emails in flow can only be sent to people in your office 365 tenants. And so obviously people contacting our help desk are not our tenants. So that's where I figured out that send email with options works almost exact same way as approval flows. It just takes a little bit of, uh, you know, a little bit of shenanigans on your part to kind of work your way through sending this particular uh, uh, series of uh, events. So, and this is something, you know, so we were going from collecting no people under our newsletter list to, you know, in the first uh, couple months of this rolling out, we passed a hundred uh, a couple weeks ago, people that have been added to our mailing list, which is driving real business value, right? So we're promoting the new power apps and flow training class that I'm doing. And so now we have a hundred plus people who have self-selected to receive those type of messages. And we, we sent them all a nice little 10% off coupon. Said, Hey, thanks for being on our mailing list. We're running this class. If you want to join, here you go. So now you might not be like me and be a small business owner, right? You might not have a website with a contact form, but I bet if you kind of stopped and looked at it, I bet there is a flow in your day-to-day -day life just waiting to be automated, right? Maybe every time you get an email from, you know, HR, right? You you need it to, you know, send you a text message to alert you, hey, you're in trouble with HR again, or, you know, or you need to have, maybe you get help desk tickets and you need to have those tickets. You know, you want to have some action kick off some sequence of events every time you get one of those tickets. You know, there's a lot that you can do with this. So I really encourage you to, you know, maybe it's not sending things to a MailChimp mailing list like I did, but there is a lot you can do with grabbing flows when you're, uh, when you get new emails arriving. Um, Another one of my uh, customers I talked to last week, they have, um, so when people create tasks for him, what he does, he has a flow that automatically adds an event to his calendar, right? He wanted it on his personal calendar when they added, assigned him a task in SharePoint. So 
Those are just the creative type of uses when you start to really think about engaging with flow. So.